Hello and once again welcome to Yesterday's Airlines and in this video we're going to take a very quick look around at the very latest NG models releases that have arrived in the Yesterday's Airlines hangar so treat this as just a very quick unboxing style video. Okay so let's uh, get on and look at the models as you can see um, we've got four new arrivals uh, two are from the November release set that's the China Southern A330 and the South African 747SP, um, the South African was delayed. And the other two are from December, the Air Transat TriStar and one of the Air of Mexico 737s. So let's get on. So the first model we'll look at is this China Southern Airbus A330-300. As you can see, it's in a special scheme. China loves its special schemes and probably about half of those special schemes have pandas on of some variety and this one does too. Um, the scheme is designed to celebrate the China International Import Expo, as you can see, and they run these expos pretty much every year, so pretty much every year there's a special scheme for the expo as well. Um, it's a, a nice, attractive scheme. It's not too childish with the pandas. It's got some nice flower logos. It's very colourful. And, yeah, the model looks pretty good in terms of the livery and things. Can't... Uh, have any obvious issues with it. So obviously a decent A330 from NG models. Um, though I did notice that the underside of the nose is perhaps, I don't know, maybe it's just me, uh, but it looks a little bit strange this curve up here. But um, but overall, um, yeah, it's fairly standard, decent model. Um, the sort of thing that NG are doing a lot nowadays um, looks, you know, just like the sort of release set that Phoenix would make. Um, I like Chinese airlines, so um, producing the odd Chinese A330 and 737s, something which you know works nicely for me. Um, and you know, generally, NG's molds are good, as you can see. It's got you know nice see-through engines. It's got you know really high crisp finish, and it's uh, a good A330. So. Pretty happy with that one, joins my fleet of China Southern, which is already, you know, pretty substantial. The second model for us to have a look at is this Aero Mexico 737-800, registered XA MIA. Uh, it was one of two Aero Mexico 737s released in the same month. The other one's got similar winglets. Well, that's the only you know substantial difference. They both wear the standard scheme, um, which is quite a nice livery. Um, this is actually well outside my collection criteria. I have to say, a bit of a naughty acquisition. Uh, I do collect Mexican Airlines, but I don't usually collect ones that date from um, the last few years. So it's a little bit cheeky. But um, I didn't have any Air Mexico in this scheme, so I thought I'd, I'd acquire one. And you know, overall, um, I've said it before, I really like the NG 737-800. So, um, you can never have too many of those. It's got a nice finish and it's a, it's a nice model. Um, I can't put it on the stand because NG 737s don't have a stand hold, but um, overall you can see it's looking pretty nice. The usual standard of finish is no... QC issues or anything like that um, with this model. And it's got a decent number of aerials as well, actually. If you count the aerials, we've got one on the top, two on the top, and three on the lower half. So I'm pretty happy with um, that, though. Um, as I say, it doesn't fit really with the rest of my Mexican fleet and I'll have to find somewhere to put it. Okay, next up um, we've got the Air Transat Lockheed TriStar, um, which is registered CFTNC. Um, I've gone on the register before saying that I really love the NG TriStar, but I also I'm not happy with how few are being made and this was the only TriStar in the December releases and once again in the January release set there are none. Um, there are obviously 
ongoing issues with producing tristars for some reason. Um, there's been talk in the past of models that have not passed QC well. Um, the Pan Am was an example of that. There's also been a lot of discussion about um, the difficulty of printing natural metal bellies. And interestingly, this one, even though it's got a, a metal belly in reality, it doesn't actually have a metal belly on the model. It's actually painted um, silver, which looks okay, but doesn't look as good as if it were uh, a natural metal finish. So um, that might be an off-putter for some. Um, and it is interesting that they could have actually produced a gray bottomed version of this TriStar um, because they did exist. So, <clears throat> you know, it's NG's choice. Doesn't dramatically bother me. I mean, I would prefer natural metal, but I'm not gonna not get the model because of that, the, the painted belly still looks pretty good. It's not too disco glittery, um, it looks okay. And overall, of course, the rest of the model is really nice because NG makes the best tri-styles that ever have been made in the 400 scale. So put her up on the stand. And it's a really fine model. In a, you know, Air Transats, I don't believe this is actually their very first scheme, but it's their primary um, original scheme, uh, one which was familiar to many plane spotters in the late 80s and the early 90s, especially if you um, you spotted at airports like Gatwick or Manchester, where um, there were a lot of Canadian charter airlines like Air Transat and Nation Air and Worldways and Odyssey International and carriers like that. Now, I really, you know, like Canadian charter airlines and there really haven't been enough of them made in 400 scale, so it's great to be able to add this Air Transat TriStar to um, the Aero Classic 757 in the same scheme, which was released um, a few years back now. I really hope we do see a lot more TriStars, um, and I really hope they can overcome the issues that they appear to have with natural metal bellies. You know, TriStars are so much more demanding of releases than A330s and 787s. I know they probably don't sell as well, but you know, surely the only reason NG exists is not to, to sell models, it is to produce um, you know, interesting models as well. So hopefully we do see more TriStars um, in the future in some TC numbers, because when they do produce them like this one, then they come out, you know, super well. So it's, it's another nice TriStar edition. Okay, and last up from this um, bunch of models is probably one of the most um, discussed models of 2020 and um, probably one of the most sought after ones of the, the last couple of months of NG's release sets and that's the South African 747 SP. Once again like the TriStars, um, NG seem to be having some issues producing these and they've said that there's not enough to go around in the first batch, there were a lot of quality fails and there will be a re-release in the future and I know that quite a few collectors have discussed some of the issues with the model, um, which I think are outside of what NG were talking about, but it's potentially possible, I guess, they may resolve some of those issues um, and make a model which is slightly different in the future. I don't really know. Um, nonetheless, you know, when you look at the model here, it looks pretty amazing. I am super impressed by the NG 747 SP. As I said before, um, it's a really nice model. I don't have any issues with the nose cone area or anything like that, though some people have. Um, I don't think that they've necessarily got the um, the cockpit windows entirely correct here, but it looks pretty good, um, and the model has a really nice uh, finish to it. Um, I know some people also would have liked there to be a black nose cone dot, um, and there isn't, but apparently there are, the original aircraft didn't have that. And the model, you know, displays really nicely. Yeah. Um, if we can put the model up on the stand and give you perhaps a better view of it overall, I think that, you know, it's a super attractive um, aircraft. Now, the biggest issue livery-wise um, is in the tail region and looking at photos and as other people have pointed out, um, South Africa can actually cut a white line across the tail there to hide the um, the change in width of the fuselage. So the whole of the vertical stab should not be orange. The very lower um, triangle area should be white and that is missing on the model. So that is a, a seemingly a, a real issue. Um, 
but not enough for me not to buy it. I think it, it knocks the herpa um, completely out of the water and in all the other details and the mold, this is a really nice model. So it'll be interesting to see, you know, if they do produce a slightly different version of it in the future. But, um, but yeah, we'll see, see what happens. So there we go. So that's a very quick um, look around the NG models, which I've just uh, received and were acquired from the November and December release sets. Um, this is obviously a different kind of video to the sort of video I usually do. Um, I don't know whether it's got any value or not, but um, leave a like or leave a comment if you think it does or doesn't. Um, overall, you know, I'm a big fan of NG. These models are all pretty good. You know, they'd score reasonably well, um, or, or they'd score in the kind of the usual, I think 25 to 30 kind of range in one of my detailed reviews. Yeah, probably minor issues with all of them, like there are with most 400 scale models, but overall, um, I'm pretty happy with the four of them. I'd like a natural belly on the TriStar. I'd like them to have not made the mistake on the tail on the, on the 747. But, you know, manufacturers make mistakes. That's um, part of the game. Everyone does it. And overall, these are, these are pretty good releases. So, Thanks very much for watching, and um, I hope you enjoy the content. Obviously, as always, check out the website Yesterday's Airlines. Follow me on Instagram, at Yesterday Airlines. Like the Facebook page, and, uh, you know, thanks very much for um, checking in. Have a great new year, and I'll speak to you later. Bye.